I'm uh, trying to find someone to give us a word. That's great when that happens. But we can have a word from God anytime by just opening our Bibles. This is the written word of God. This, this is the infallible word of God. This, you can be sure this is from God. <laughs> you, you can be 100% sure that this is from God. Amen. Isn't it neat that we can, we can uh, have him talk with us? He's given us a book that's alive. Jesus said in John 6, 63, he said, the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. These words are different than the words of in any other book in the world. These words are alive. They are spirit and they are life. And the ultimate place that God wants these words words to live is in our hearts. He wants our mind to be renewed with this and he wants his word to dwell in our hearts in the deepest part of our being. Amen. They'll live in us. They're alive. They are spirit. Oh, if we can just get this, how powerful it is to read the word of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Talking about Jesus. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's John 1, chapter 1, verse 14. Then another way that we can uh, grow in knowing Him is through the Holy Spirit. Uh, turn with me to John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Helper, Jesus, the, these are the words of Jesus to His disciples, and we are His disciples, aren't we? But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you. Hallelujah. Glory. Have you ever wondered how Matthew, Mark, and Luke could remember all the things that Jesus said? The Holy Spirit brought it to their remembrance. But you know, He brings the Word to our remembrance today. How many of you have been in situations where you were facing some situation and a scripture just rises up in your heart. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and just gives you direction. That's the Holy Spirit that does that for us. Amen. And then turn with me to John chapter 15, uh, chapter 16, excuse me, 15, verse 26. Again, the words of Jesus. He said, but when the helper, who's the helper? The Holy Spirit. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me. Hallelujah. He tells us about our Savior, about our Lord, about Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Spirit that helps us. Amen. We ought to want to be full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not, you know, it's good to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but we need to continually be filled, refilled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, when you drive a car... You go get the oil changed every now and then. We don't have to change it as often now as we used to, but you, you know, you, know, you, you go and get uh, your car serviced. Well, you know what? Uh, we just need fr fresh oil of the Holy Spirit every day. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Then we need to look for God in everything, and we need to recognize His providence. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, uh, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. We need to look for God in everything. Even when the circumstances don't look so great, look for God. He's there. And if we'll trust in Him, love Him, and know that He loves us, we'll be able to look back. And even when it was something that just seemed terrible at the time, we'll be able to say, well, what the devil meant for harm, God meant for good. God can turn anything around for good. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we need to obey Him, that is, keep His commandments. John chapter 14, especially the royal commandment of love. John chapter 14, verse 21. The Bible says this. This is the, uh, Jesus again. Uh, these are the red letter scriptures. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. And we decide I'm going to keep his commandments, and especially that royal law of love. I'm going to love him. I'm going to walk in love toward uh, my fellow man. I'm going to uh, 
obey that greatest commandment of all, to love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength, and to love my neighbor as myself. I'm going to obey that royal love commandment. Jesus gave us that new commandment when he said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Amen. <laughs> so uh, when we obey his commandments, what, does, what is the promise? He will manifest himself to us. Amen. Will that relationship that we have with him will be more powerful and closer than ever as we flow with his will for our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, in those interviews, I was talking about the interviews of the this years ago when I saw that guy with 700 Club out on the streets interviewing people. Most of the people, when they were asked about God, you know, they said, well, you can just do whatever you want to do. You know, just... Uh, God, uh, God loves us all. We just do whatever. Well, what about wanting to please God? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what about wanting to grow in our relationship with Him? What about wanting to keep His word, to keep His commandments? Amen. How, one way to keep His commandments is to walk in love. Uh, Paul said, "Owe no one anything but to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law." You can list all of the Ten Commandments, and if you'll stop and think about it, if you're truly walking in agape love, that uh, unconditional love that God released into the world, into our hearts through Jesus Christ, if you're walking in that kind of love, if you love Him, you're not going to worship other gods. You're not going to carve out graven images or worship idols. Uh, you're not going to, if, if you're walking in love toward your wife or toward your husband, you're not going to commit adultery. You're not going to murder someone if you're walking in love. You're, you're not going to uh, covet of what they have. You know, uh, uh, love really, when you, God simplified it for us in the new covenant because uh, he's uh, given us the ability to walk in his love. His love has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5, uh, 5. Now love does not disappoint because uh, the Holy Spirit has been poured out in our hearts. Uh, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. That's what Paul wrote. And so that love's been poured out in our hearts. He's empowered us to be able to walk in that love. If we'll just choose love at every crossroads of decision. He does require that we choose it. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given it as a commandment. It's a new commandment. So it requires a choice at every crossroads of decision. Are we going to obey God or are we going to obey the world? Are we going to have a, a Christ view of the world or a world view of the world? I choose the view of God, the, the view of his word as the standard. Amen. We need to obey Him and keep uh, Him in grow in God. Turn to Jude chapter 20. Or Jude chapter is only one chapter, but Jude verse 20 and verse 21. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So if we want to grow in knowing Him, we need to spend time in prayer and in worship, praying with the understanding, praying with the Spirit. Amen. That's why I'm so excited about this 24-7 uh, prayer initiative where we have one day where we're praying with other well, one, someone's praying somewhere in a church <laughs> uh, every hour of every day. And we have the first Tuesday. I thank God that, you know, a little over a year, Sunday night prayer service. And we're encouraged, you know, we're encouraging you to pray more because that's so important in our knowing God. Then uh, Mark 10, chapter 15, uh, chapter here with me to Mark chapter verse said assured I say to you does not receive as a little by no means 
enter. And we become as a little child. We need that childlike faith. The Bible does not call us to be childish, but to be childlike. There's a difference uh, uh, with our faith. Uh, A.W. Tozer, in, in The Pursuit of God, discloses in thick from the wise simplified to him to his they will be blessed we all improve and come with candor if we quickly on come to him and come like little children not we're rock. We do have one scientist in our congregation, <laughs> an ex-rocket scientist. He's not looking at me because he didn't want to be. <laughs> Vernon was actually a rocket scientist at NASA. But y'all didn't know that. You didn't know that you had a rocket scientist here in the, uh, did you? You never know who you're saying. But God is calling you He revealed that. And then last, I want to read from verse 4. Verse 8. He love does not for God is love. And we've already talked about that. I got a little ahead of my life. If we grow the knowledge of that person, we need to commandment of all. That royal love, that love, because you know, through it, it get to amen, and through us ourselves. And you know, a lot of vessels will, but on it more, more being a vessel, I like to. Riverbed, love, and that uh, you know his love is just flowing through us all the time if we'll permit it. Amen. Let's bow our heads for uh, uh, prayer. Amen. You know A. W. Tozer speaking of him in in, uh, in day by day said, "Modern man can go anywhere." Everything completely about the universe, but only a is cure God. And I believe that there are those within the hearing of our voice that they have heard this message and they want to know God. They may have heard about God during their lives, but they realize they need a personal relationship with God. And if I'm speaking to you, and you're saying, you know, I want to choose to accept Him as my personal Lord and Savior, where I, I, I want more than just knowing about God. I want a personal relationship with God. I'm telling you, you want He's already knocking on the door to your heart. And all He requires of you is a choice to choose Him. He does require that you make that choice to choose him. We call that repentance, where we turn away from the way of the world and we turn him we turn to the cross. He turns on that cross. For the ways of the but the gift of life in Christ our Lord. He took the way for our sin. He bids us and we all. That's what we make coming to the cross. Coming to and surrender to him and say, Lord, my life, I ask you to live in me and be the Lord and save my life. And he'll do that. That's the new birth. I was born again. Entered the kingdom. Person, relationship with Christ Jesus. The whole come new. So if you're saying you want, come to God. I like 
my life. I would accept him to ask my life. If you your hand up high, just lift your back down. Choose Jesus. Jesus. That God and wherever you lift up if you choose Jesus, personal Lord, stand to our feet. Say this together to those that may be for the first time. Man. And let me say this, if you want to dedicate your life to Jesus, today, uh, beginning with can be your to say the internet audience, say this with us. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. Jesus, accept you. Ever, my person, Lord, into my heart. Thank you. Take charge of my life. Jesus, now. You're. Amen. Praise God. It's a hand. God. The Lord. Amen. Glory. Be seated. It is Amen. If you said that prayer, please click on the praise report button. You can, if you're not there already, you can go to glorychurch.com. Glorychurch.com. There's a praise report button, a prayer request button, a free books button where we want to send you seven free books that I've written. We just give God the glory for them. And we just want to bless you with them. God bless you. Uh, if anyone needs prayer, we invite you to come up to the front and we're going to just pray for those that need prayer and believe God together. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Kathy, would you help us pray for people? Thank you, Jesus. Anita, would you help us pray for people? Thank you, Jesus. Maybe, maybe a little too cold. I see some of you are covered up. Maybe we need to... Well, the service almost over with now anyway. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyone need prayer? Maybe you, maybe you need healing in your body. God heals the sick today. Maybe you're brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted. Maybe you're depressed. He delivers the oppressed. Hey. Let me turn this on. God heals are sick. I want to just without taking in your body. Pray for you. Just uh, be healing. Anyone? 
needed. Amen. Did you see the Lord? I uh, if you that also for you for you well. The Bible says Christ is yesterday, today, forever, and He's still healing the sick today. And he's the one that's going to touch and heal you. We're just uh, going to pray and believe God together and declare his word over. Just declare in the name of Jesus that by his stripes you were healed. Be whole in Jesus' name. Those here, those watching by internet, receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've said that where two or more gather in your name, you're there in the midst of them. Lord Jesus, you're there in the midst of us. You're here in the midst of us, touching and healing these, Lord, that are standing in Jesus' name. And even those that are not standing, Lord, touch any that need healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all all your diseases. Be whole in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. All glory to you, Lord Jesus, our healer. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And you know, check yourself out. You know, I believe you're going to find that you're getting better. If you either got your healing or it began. You know, you hear people all the time, we need to learn to talk like Jesus would have us talk. How many of you have said this before? I've said it before, I'll be honest. And, but, you know, you start getting a little sniffles or something, you say, oh, I'm catching a cold. We need to learn to talk. When that happens, we need to say, I'm catching a healing. Yeah, I, I, I had some sniffles here, but you know what? I'm catching a healing. Praise God. You know, we, we need to talk God's Word. Amen. Declare His Word over ourselves. He's powerful. If we'll speak it, Amen. The word, the Bible says, uh, Paul said, I believe, therefore I speak. Amen. <laughs> we need to speak the word of God over our families, over our lives, and not words of defeat. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, God bless you if you'd stand to your feet. And uh, don't forget we have a prayer service tonight at uh, 6 o'clock. And we'll do something. I realize we had too cold in here, I can tell by looking at you. So one person saying no, so I, I don't know what it said on back there. But anyway, we'll try to do better with that. And uh, it's, it's hard to tell these days. You know, it can be uh, 40 one day and 80 something the next, can it? This is Houston, Texas. God bless you. Go out and win the world for Jesus and come back and pray with us at six tonight. Love you. Thank you so much for coming out on this rainy morning.